call me a biscuit. What is up, everybody? This is Anthony with VR365. What is going on? It is Wednesday. It is July 17th. It is 7.31 p.m., and I got to tell you, have we got a banger for you tonight. We have got the shizziest shiz show you've probably seen in quite some time. Now, why is that the case? It's the case because I have nothing prepared. Sometimes this happens. Sometimes I go live on the air with nothing, with absolutely nothing. Now, technically, I don't actually have absolutely nothing. I do have something. I do have something. Okay, so the Vertigo 2 demo, it is out there. It is available right now. You've been wanting a big Valve Index brand new game that takes complete and total advantage of your Valve Index headset, your Valve Index controllers, and Vertigo 2, the demo is available now. I did actually play Vertigo 2 a little bit earlier this evening. I did jump in there for about a half an hour, so I do have my thoughts on the Vertigo 2 demo. And I can also talk about the original Vertigo game. And we can talk about Vertigo 2. Now, the thing about Vertigo 2, it's not coming until 2020. So we've got some time to wait in regards to, uh, to Vertigo 2. In fact, why don't we go ahead and let's just check out the Steam page for Vertigo 2 real quick. Uh, since we're on the subject, let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, so let's go ahead and bounce over to the webinar. And here we are. This is Vertigo 2. Vertigo 2 is a single-player VR adventure. Explore the depths of the vast quantum reactor as you descend to finish your journey home. And you can see right here, planned release date 2020. Okay, so we are going to be waiting a little while to actually get this game. So that needs to be understood. Uh, but we can see right here, July 17th, that is today. Vertigo 2 demo now, now available. A free demo showing off a hefty vertical slice of Vertigo 2's gameplay is now available. Do you like VR? Do you like aliens, robots, and the occasional gremlin? Then Vertigo 2 may be just the game for you. Only one eight. Only one way to find out, though, go and download the demo. And you know what I did see? So Paradise Decay, he tweeted out that Vertigo 2 is the best VR demo that he's played this entire year. And the big question I have for that is, what other demos have, has he played this year? I mean, well, there are demos on the Oculus Quest. I mean, I've played demos on the Oculus Quest. For example, um, on the Oculus Quest, you've got a demo for Creed. You got a demo for Journey of the Gods. Uh, what else? You got demos for Beat Saber. There's a couple other demos that are on there as well. And honestly, the demo for Journey of the Gods is pretty good. I, I think it's a pretty good demo. Is this the best demo that uh, anybody has played this year? Well, I got to say, first of all, look, I played about 20, probably 25 minutes of this demo. I had a number of slight technical issues. There were certain parts of this demo where the audio just cut out on me and for for a long stretch as well, like it like the audio cut out for like five minutes. And I was thinking, I was wondering, uh, is it a problem with, uh, did something go wrong with like the sound on my computer? Is it some kind of thing? But I think it was the game because the sound would come back in, then it would come back out. And so that kind of screwed my experience up a little bit. Uh, and so I was only in there for about 20 minutes. Definitely need to hop in there again. But I do have some brief impressions of this demo. And it looks pretty good. I, I think it looks pretty good. There Actually, 
the very beginning of the demo, I don't want to spoil it too much, but in the very beginning of the demo, you start off in this room. You're kind of almost in like a prison cell in a way. And you've got like this scientist on the other side of the glass that's talking to you and explaining to you what has happened. And then basically your little prison cell that you're in starts moving along like it's a tram. And it's very Half-Life-esque. In fact, the original Vertigo game was kind of Half-Life-esque as well. Uh, way back in the days when the original Vertigo, when the original Vertigo game came out, a lot of people were like, "Yeah, it's a, it's got a little bit of a Half-Life flavor." You know, a little bit is is what a lot of people said about it. And then, of course, Vertigo Two, this beginning, it's almost like you're on a tram, and so you're going through and you're seeing these different rooms, stuff that is going on in this facility. It's like some kind of science facility where stuff is going haywire and it's basically opening up all these little portals to these parallel universes and creatures from the parallel universes are leaking into this reality. They're grabbing the things that are leaking in and they're trying to lock it up and lock it down, but it's unstable. Everything goes crazy. All hell breaks loose. And so that's kind of the story of Vertigo 2. Now, the first thing that really jumped out, I mean, well, initially the production value I thought was pretty darn good in the very beginning of it, but there is a bit of shakiness. Like, I'm not going to rant and rave about this thing kind of like Paradise Decay. I might disagree a little bit. Now, maybe I need to play farther in the demo, and maybe it's more impressive the farther you go along, and and then maybe my audio problems that I had as well kind of screwed with the demo for me, and so I didn't get the full impact of it. But one of the things I did notice is the game engine itself, like the game world, every once in a while, I was just kind of standing in a room and I was looking at the walls and the walls would like move a little bit or there was just a little bit of like a jitteriness to things, but it would be solid most of the time, but then every once in a while it would get a little weird. And I don't know if that was some kind of problem with... I, I mean, I don't anticipate that this game is like killing my video card or anything. So I think it would work pretty well. But I did notice some little, little weirdness around the edges. And just like when you would go into some of these different rooms. The thing about this game is, right, is that they don't have like 25 developers that are working on this. I'm pretty sure it's mainly Zach. And this other guy, I think there's only like a couple of guys that are working on this. Primarily, it's all Zach. And Zach doing some incredible things in terms of what this kid has done as a teenager and now as an early adult to be making like legit games that have like boss monsters and all this stuff going on, music, production value, all of it is pretty good. But the thing that people need to understand with like Vertigo 2, this is not a AAA production. At certain points, it almost looks like it's got some pretty good production values, but you'll also see a lot of seams as well. Maybe the single most impressive thing about this entire demo for me is on your left hand, you basically have this like teleporting thing. You can see it there on the gun. And it basically gives you like a wristwatch kind of that has a little dude's face on it, a little character, like a little alien guy. And that shit is so crystal clear. It looks so good on the Valve Index. So one of the things I've really been noticing about the Valve Index is clarity. Well, I, I talked about clarity. Clarity is job one. That, of course, is the tagline for Valve Index. Clarity is job one. And they've achieved that job. Job well done. Clarity is there. The Valve Index is all about clarity. Clarity is really good with the Valve Index. But the other thing I noticed is like close-up objects. I don't know, maybe that was part of what they were working on here with like low persistence and the way they have the lenses and everything and the way they're kind of focusing in on everything. Um, Close-up objects look pretty damn good and look pretty damn detailed. And so if you get into the Vertigo 2 demo, 
I highly recommend take a look at your wrist. Take a look at that little indicator where it has your health and really look at it. Like get it right up by your eyeballs and examine it pretty closely and you'll be like, wow, this is so clean. This is so crisp. This is so dialed in. And so that was one of the nice things that I thought about the whole thing. You do get some guns. You're fighting some alien monsters. The aliens that I initially battled uh, left quite a bit to be desired. Like, I don't know. I think Paradise is a little bit out of control here with his talk about this being like the best beard. Or maybe it just goes a lot longer and other stuff happens and it's so much more impressive. So maybe I got to shut shut the F up because I've only played it for 20 minutes. So who knows? You know, maybe I'm a little bit off here. But what I would say, though, is like, eh, I don't know. I think the best demo I've played this year, I'm trying to think what had demos. You know, what games have had demos this year? And I go back to the Oculus Quest, and I think I just got to go back to Journey of the Gods. Because Journey of the Gods, the demo that you play in Journey of the Gods, it kind of starts out a bit boring. But you go through and you battle like a towering uh, monster, basically, at the end of that demo. And I think it's just a well-done demo. So I would I would probably say Journey of the Gods is my favorite demo so far this year. But let's see what some folks are talking about in chat. So Show Game is in the building. Kevgret, Person Person, Sponge 720, Slay Blaze, Zayla Maru, uh, Frank Zappa, Recycled is up in here. We got Steve Drumheller of Conquer Reality Fame. Dude, Steve, you got to change your YouTube name to Steve Drumheller of Conquer Reality Fame. Put fame on the end of that one. Okay, VR Spry Guy. I don't know. Did I already mention VR Spry Guy? No, actually, I didn't. Gamer Tag VR is in the building as well. Rudel. Zavenno, main fan is in there. He played the demo, didn't get to finish it. Very vertigo so far. He did have performance issues. Um, yeah, Slayblay said, ah, yeah, I had the audio cut out, so I rebooted, and it works fine after that. Um, and Vertigo 2 had several Half-Life references. Hilarious, really. Well, yeah, it did have the... Well, actually, I probably shouldn't spoil it, but yeah, it did have a couple of Half-Life references. I did notice that, of course. Uh, R. Gambo. Yeah, late show. Yeah, so in terms of scheduling, I just wanted to go over real quick. So basically the way it's been working, folks, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is a 7.30 kind of a thing. 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. It's late show like a mofo. That is Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. And it's because I'm working eight-hour days. And then I get home. I got to have some dinner too. And so then 7.30 p.m. is where it works for me right now. Now... Scheduling notes. Tomorrow, of course, is Thursday. Thursday is a Twitch kind of a deal. But guess what, guys? MRTV, Sebastian, your boy, is going to be in the building. I'm going to be talking to him about the Valve Index, about the Rift S, about Oculus Quest, about Reverb, about... Uh, basically about everything. You know, I mean, we're going to talk about the state of VR more from probably a hardware standpoint than anything else, but I'm looking forward to that conversation. Now, that is going to be 1.30 p.m. 1.30 p.m., okay? So kind of prime time. 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. So all of you UK viewers, check us out, man. Hop over to Twitch. I want to break my record on Twitch for the most viewers on Twitch, very few viewers, very few viewers. I would love to get a hundred viewers on Twitch. Can we do that? Can we get a hundred viewers on Twitch? So tomorrow, don't tell anybody about it today. Wait till tomorrow. But tomorrow, try to tell people that MRTV VR365 live on Twitch, 1.30 p.m. Pacific. I would love to somehow get a hundred people up in there on Twitch, mainly for um, for Sebastian, you know, because Sebastian, like he don't get out of bed unless a hundred people are going to watch him get out of bed. And so I feel bad for Sebastian. So we got to get some more people on there. Yeah. We're probably going to talk about Defector. I played Defector a little bit more last night and I, I was playing it because of Seabass. And I know that Seabass is a fan of, of, of Defector. 
Um, but you know what? I'm kind of thinking, okay, so I got past where I was stuck in Defector, but I'm kind of thinking I need to go to the Rift. I need to go to my CV1. I need to play Defector in my CV1. That's what I'm thinking. I, because the Valve Index, I mean, it looks great. It looks beautiful in the Valve Index, but I still feel like the controllers, I'm still a little bit concerned about the controllers, the Valve Index controllers with Defector. I think I should have a native experience. But anyway, guys, tomorrow, Sebastian, 1.30 p.m. Oh, yeah, Everybody's Golf had a VR demo. That is Wizard 101. Wizard 101. Everybody's no, and, and Steve Drumheller says his name is long already. No, dude, Steve Drumheller of Conquer Reality fame. You got to let people know that you're famous, man. You are famous, Amos. And then Main Fan says that I'm going to see screen door effect for reals, for reals this time when I go back to CV1. Uh, CV1 is like the old girlfriend you always go back to. Yeah, old reliable. Old Reliable is what we call CV1. I see, I do see Screen Door, no question about it. I see Screen Door in the Valve Index. And I think, see, the way I would describe it to somebody, and I'm sure I'll talk to, talk to Sebastian about this tomorrow, is I go back to my analogy of an RGB monitor, which I actually have a bomb-ass RGB monitor sitting right here. This is a Sony PVM. If you've got like a Super Nintendo or a Neo Geo or a Turbo Graphics or a freaking Sega CD or something like that, and you've got legitimate real deal RGB cables and you can hook it up to this Sony PVM monitor, that's it right there. It is incredible. But the thing about an RGB monitor is it exposes every flaw. You, you get the beautiful clarity. Everything is clean and crisp, but you also see every little flaw, flaws that you normally didn't see. And I feel it's kind of a similar thing with the screen door on the Valve Index. The clarity is good, and I see the screen door. You know, and you do have the extra FOV, right? And they didn't go up to reverb resolution. So they're spreading that out. I, I believe there is screen door. People people say there isn't screen door. I don't know. I, I say there is screen door. But yeah, it'll absolutely be interesting for me to go back to the CV1, um, going back to Cali, going back to Cali. I don't think so. Yeah, no, but it'll be cool. It'll be cool to go back to the CV1, plugging in all my goddamn USB sensors, not looking forward to that because I've got about three of them unplugged because I thought they might have been screwing with the valve index there for a minute. And so plugging all those babies back in, not exactly excited to do that. But, you know, we're going to go ahead and have to do that because I do want to give Defector its props because, you know, it's weird. People are all over the map when it comes to Defector because I forget, oh, somebody um, somebody emailed the VR Game Rankings website and was giving us their rankings for like their favorite games. And they mentioned that Defector is just incredible. Like Defector is just incredible. So you've got certain people that are saying Defector is unbelievable. It's amazing. And then there's other people that are saying Defector is pretty craptacular. Because if I go to the webinar and if we go to the Oculus subreddit, I know I saw somebody say something about, about Defector sucks. And I was like, whoa, you know, kind of shocking. So people kind of all over the map. But I mean, that's pretty much every game. But still, a little bit surprising. Actually, let's go ahead and go to the webinar real quick. Bouncing over to the webinar. Here it is at the very bottom. So Defector is really not very good at all. And there's 87 comments. And you know people are going to jump into this one, especially on the Oculus subreddit. This is what we're calling an Oculus exclusively funded game by Twisted Pixel. You do have the Oculus Defense Force that will rally around all exclusives. Let's go ahead and jump into these comments. Let's see what's going on. Maybe this won't be such a popular opinion. Yeah, no, the guy should have started off unpopular opinion, semicolon. So, Defector, not really very good at all. Yeah, no, I, I'm kind of... Here's an unpopular opinion. 
Actually, no, here's a very popular opinion. I'm tired of unpopular opinion threads. Aren't you guys tired of unpopular opinion threads? I'm, I'm sick of them. I really am. Um, maybe this won't be such a popular opinion, but Defector is probably my biggest disappointment of the year. I'm halfway through right now. My impression is that rather than being an improvement on the only other game it's really comparable to, Blood and Truth, it's actually a major step back. You know, speaking of Blood and Truth, I believe there is a demo that is coming to Blood and Truth like any day now. Like the demo might be coming tomorrow. So there is going to be a demo for Blood and Truth. So if you're a PlayStation VR gamer, you've yet to uh, grab Blood and Truth, you probably have a problem and you should probably see a psychologist. But if you just don't have the money or something, check out the demo because there is a demo for that. So let's see. The guy has pros. He's got cons. Man, this is a long ass freaking blood and uh this is like war and peace this thread here okay so pros the game looks good graphics feel pretty sharp locations have some decent variety to them some of the action set pieces are pretty cool some of the gadgets are neat dialogue options cons story is incoherent and poorly acted graphics feel sharp but there's a thick thick black outline that envelops each character as if they're cell shaded uh, some of the action pieces are cool, but others are downright terrible. Um, gameplay in general is extremely scripted. Da, da, da. <sighs> Overall, I think Defector is quite a wasted opportunity, and the $20 price point makes a lot of sense now. Well, I mean, I think you've got to factor in the $20 price point. Let's see how people reacted to it. Thanks for the honest opinion. Despite all the hype, I'm not surprised your criticisms, given the low price point alone. Uh, is Beat Saber really AAA production? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Gameplay, yeah. Scripted story in VR is a weird thing. Uh, Lone Echoes, Distraction Booty. I wish I could refund my purchase. I stopped playing after the first level. Feels very amateurish, arcadey, and gimmicky. Well, yeah. So I guess there are people out there that kind of are shiting all over the factor a little bit. My decision, um, man, uh, so, so far... It's hard for me to talk about Defector in a, in a good way because I I wonder if the Val, I wonder if the Valve Index controllers are causing me some issues with Defector and because of that it makes me not want to get too harsh about it and so you know that's kind of my concern there but basically one of the biggest downsides for me with Defector is like I would you know you're jumping out of the plane you're doing this different stuff like I got into the car I did the car thing but everything was kind of like automatic again it kind of went into well it was what I was talking about with blood and truth where it's almost like wait am I playing the game or are you playing the game so it kind of went into some different little automatic modes a little bit for me with the scripted events um, but I think the character designs are really good. You know, I'm not too worried about the cell shaded design or whatever. I think that is kind of an artistic decision that they're going with here. I like the human characters. I think they look good. I think they talk good. I think the set dressing, like the actual set walking around this airplane, looking at all the details everywhere, I thought all of it was pretty good. And again, at the end of the day, this is a $20 game. It's a $20 game. So I think we need to back up a little bit and remember that it's a $20 game. Okay, so anyway, that is Defector. I don't, how did we even get onto that topic? I don't know. But let's go ahead and bounce over to Upload VR. Let's see if there's any news that is going on. Um, I know there's stories popping off. Um, camera feed froze back. Okay, I uh, don't know what's going on. My camera, let me check the... Um, let me check the stream here. It says okay, so not sure what's going on with the stream. Yeah, maybe once in a while we do have some problems, um, but it does appear to be okay right now. But anyways, let's go ahead and let's bounce over to Upload VR. Let's see what some new stories are going on in the world of VR gaming. So I don't know if I mentioned this yesterday or not. We did a Twitch stream last night. Not one of my best performances, I don't think. I think it was kind of craptacular. I tried to make the best of a bad... You know, here's the thing. I'm getting up here every single day. 
And so it's not always going to be an award-winning production. In fact, a lot of times it's not an award-winning production. But you know what? We'll try to do the best we can. And yesterday was a little bit shaky. There's going to be some bad episodes. The way I look at it is it's the same way I look at like a good TV show or a good podcast. I feel like if you watch 10 episodes of a TV show and if 7 of the episodes are very good, or if you listen to 10 episodes of a podcast and seven of the 10 episodes are very good, I think it's freaking solid. It's very solid. And I think VR 365, I think it may be seven out of 10. I don't know. I can't say because I'm doing it myself, so I can't comment on it myself. But I would say about seven out of 10 episodes are decent. And so I think that's a pretty decent batting average. So I'll go ahead and live with that. But yesterday, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, Battle Wake, the closed beta for that is jumping off. And one of the things I was going to say about betas and stuff like that is honestly, I don't get too involved. Like, I don't jump at this stuff normally. Now, if there was like a beta for Stormland or if there was a beta for uh, Asgard's Wrath or something that had like something that had a lot of hype to it that I was really excited for that I just can't wait to play. Battle Wake, I, Battle Wake is one of these games where it's like, you know, maybe it'll blow me away. Maybe I'll fall head over heels for Battle Wake. I don't know. I'm not super hyped on it. So I don't really jump into a lot of these betas. Like, I don't really worry about them too much. I'll kind of wait for the game to almost be done or go into early access or whatever. And I kind of would rather just wait for that. So that's kind of the deal. I know people are probably like, dude, you're crazy. Like, you're supposed to be into VR. You're supposed to be covering VR. You should jump in every little beta that happens anywhere at any given time. And I just don't do that. And maybe it's a bad idea, but I don't know. Um, are you guys in the Battle Wake beta? Are you hyped for Battle Wake? It's, it's a pretty nice upcoming game. I'm, I'm interested in it, but not like super duper hyped. But I would like to check it out. Okay, so also in the news, Vader Immortal and Wolves in the Walls are both up for Emmy Awards. Okay, so now we're doing VR Emmy Awards, or I think I've heard about this before in the past. Uh, I think there were some other maybe Emmy Awards in VR categories. Um, let's see, NRIs, they're both deserving of wins. Unlike a lot of other VR awards, Emmy's categories are more focused on VR storytelling than gaming experiences. Yeah, past winners include Oculus's own Henry and the compelling VR documentary Zero Days. And dude, Zero Days, that is a bomb-ass documentary in VR. That is an incredible doc. Have you guys seen Zero Days? That is a really good documentary in VR. Must, a must-check-out documentary. Very impressive. And it's the kind of thing, I wonder if I have a trailer for it. Let's see, let me bounce back over here. Hold on a second might have a trailer somewhere for it but it's this is the kind of thing zero days where you can show somebody that is kind of like a highbrow type and and even they'll be impressed uh yeah i do i do have a zero days trailer yeah let's pop this on let's just take a quick look at this it's a covert operation maybe you don't know as much as you think you know here is a piece of software that should only exist in the cyber realm and it is able to cause real-world physical destruction. Stuxnet wasn't just an evolution. It was really a revolution. In the they just did a damn good job. They did a really good job of the way the backgrounds are, the way the visuals work, like, like the, the audio production, all of this. They deserved it. They absolutely deserved to win that VR in, uh, Emmy, Zero Days, absolutely deserved it. Oculus is Henry. I can see them deserving it as well. But the reason we're talking about this is we're talking about Vader Immortal and Wolves in the Walls. Now, Wolves in the Walls, I got love for that. Let me find, I, I'm pretty sure we got a trailer for Wolves in the Walls. So let me 
find one of these. Yeah, Wolves in the Walls, it's all over. Yeah, dude, I, I'm a very big fan of Wolves in the Walls. I've already talked about this a number of times. I talked about it when it first came out. We talked about it on a VR Roundtable episode right after it first came out. I thought they did a damn good job with this just in terms of like, like the the darkness and with her walking around you know they really used the 360 aspect of it and you wanted to follow her and you wanted to follow the action and i thought they did a damn good job with that so wolves in the walls very impressed do you guys actually this is a good question of the day let me go ahead and grab my question of the day thing uh where are we i'm in the wrong spot here let me go ahead and grab my question of the day. So here's the question of the day. Look, I know this is a VR gaming channel, and it's all about VR gaming, and most of you guys are hardcore VR gamers. But my question is, what about the VR experiences? Do you guys mess around with these VR experiences? Because there's some incredible VR experiences. Now, the downside is a lot of these things, they last for about 15 minutes, and then they're over and you really only want to do them a couple of times and then they're done and then you never really visit them again but i feel like the vr experiences like this is some of the best kept secrets that's going on in vr especially for like wives girlfriends soccer moms and other people like instead of putting them into a game maybe put them into some of this stuff like my ubi and stuff like that so many outstanding VR experiences. And so it's nice, in my opinion, going back to this story over here, that they are getting some attention in the Emmys and other stuff like that. We're getting some VR categories. I think that's a good thing. So uh, definitely excited for that. As far as Vader and all of that, I mean, it's kind of more of a game. Eh, well, you know, I, I made the argument that it's not really a game, but other people are saying, no, it really is a game because you've got the dojo and all that stuff. Okay, so anyways, let's just go back and look at some of the main stories. Yeah, did you guys hear that there isn't going to be a 2080 Super? Like apparently NVIDIA says that there isn't going to be a 2080 Super. That is very disappointing. Um, Spider-Man has added new missions. That is surprising. Uh, let me check this story out. I haven't checked this out. Update 1.01 launched for the PSVR version of the game yesterday. Two new time trials, two new combat trials, and five new pins to discover. Um, and they're thinking about bringing the app to Oculus Quest. Yeah, so, you know, I did try the Spider-Man thing the other day. I thought it I thought it looked pretty good in certain ways. It felt pretty good. Obviously, we need, like, a full-fledged experience. But I think if they could somehow recreate that Manhattan City feeling being Spider-Man and swinging through Manhattan, that is impressive. That is exhilarating. There is something about just swinging really quickly, <clears throat> really quickly through an awesome cityscape that would be very exhilarating. We've had a lot of uh, exhilarating situations with the various Winland games that kind of prove that experience would work. And somebody needs to do that. It really should be Insomniac. You know, and, and it really should be on PlayStation VR. Of course, you guys are not going to be happy about that. You'd want it to be on PC VR. Okay, let's bounce over to Road VR. Let's see if there's any news that is, that's going on over there. Oh, you know what? This was in the news about the cameras. And so this starts that entire discussion about piracy, not piracy, about privacy. The privacy discussion. And so basically what they're saying in this story is with Facebook recently launching the Oculus Quest and Rift S, both of which got a gang of cameras all over them, they're saying it's never a bad time to be skeptical about how your private information is being used by products and companies which gather information about you. But an especially good time is when using products that rely on always-on cameras during use. Yeah, dude, think about how many cameras we have going on all the time. I mean, I've got two cameras that are right here. I got my my uh, my C920, that one right there. I got a crappy Logitech one that I use as a dummy camera for Skype. I've got like four sensor cameras all around here from my Oculus CV1, 
dude, there's camera. I got a PlayStation VR camera over there. Like if we really had like a sentient AI that could like dial into my house and access all of these cameras, it could basically see everything, man. Like it, it could access my Oculus Quest that's over there. It would have those cameras. It would have these cameras. You know, it'd have these cameras. Like it could basically just watch me all around my house. And what I, I'll say it once, I'll say it a thousand times. Privacy doesn't exist. Not in 2019, it doesn't. Not in a pop, you, not in a, like a civilized country, it doesn't. You pretty much need to go to the backwoods. You need to go off the grid. You got to basically go Kaczynski style. You pretty much just got to fall off the face of the earth and have no electronical devices. You, you pretty much got to go... You know, you got to go hardcore off the grid. It's the only way you're literally going to have legitimate privacy. I, I just feel like privacy. And th But there's people that'll be like, no, Anthony, you've got it all wrong. See, you've already given up. You've just given up to the major corporations, man. You got to fight the good fight, man. Well, it's not my fight. I I'm just going to, I'm willing to just let it go. I'm willing to let it go. The argument that I have in regards to privacy is I think too many people, too many people think that they're so important that freaking people are going to want to catalog every little thing you do. Dude, they don't care about you that much. You're not that important. Now, if you were a congressman, okay, or if you were like a CIA director or the freaking FBI director or you're Trump or you're some big ass celebrity or somebody, yeah, maybe maybe you're a target and, and maybe somebody will hack your shit and try to get your photos and all of that. But if you're just a regular Joe Schmo, does anybody really give a damn? There's too many people. There's 7 billion people on planet Earth. There's too many people. They can't follow every person. You're not that important. See, I think people that get really caught up in privacy... I think they think they're a lot more important than they are. And they think like people are going to be tracking every... Sure, there's going to be AIs that track every little move you make. But that's AI. It's not like there's going to be an individual person manning a freaking desktop that's going to be manning uh, drones flying outside your house and, and viewing you from outside your windows. So anyway, let's go ahead and see what Facebook had to say about this whole thing. Okay, so here is Facebook's response um, this is uh, Road to VR. They reached out to Facebook asking them about the cameras and stuff, and this was the response. The sensors on Quest and Rift S are primarily used to create a 3D map of your environment, which helps locate your headset and controllers in a known space so Quest slash Rift S can work and keep you safe. This data is processed on the headsets. The only information we keep on our servers today, today, yeah, that's a very key word. Let's read that again. The only information we keep on our servers today consists of performance metrics that don't contain any recognizable detail about your environment. These metrics help us improve the inside out tracking system. We don't collect and store images or 3D maps of your environment on our servers today. Today, raw images are not stored anywhere and 3D maps are stored locally on the headset for Quest and on your local PC where you have access to delete it for Rift S. This makes it possible for Quest Rift S to remember the play spaces you've already set up in multiple rooms. And then they continue to say that, you know, there's certain apps that you can opt into that, you know, allow you to use like pass through footage and stuff like that. And then that's a whole different ball game if you start to go down that road. But I don't know. I mean, are you guys worried? Let, let's see what you guys are saying about privacy. Okay, so Slayblay says, Anyway, the NVIDIA Supers are a bit underwhelming, especially compared to the AMD cards now. Um, is anyone running a 5700 XT? That is Alan Young. 
uh, Slayblay says, Zuck is memorializing Anthony's entire life as we speak, I am sure. Yeah, no, I don't think so, man. I'm just not important enough. It'd be awesome if I was the director of the CIA and I was important enough to have people scan every little thing, but I just, you're not that important. That's my take on privacy. You're not that important. Okay, um, let's see. Facebook is a data mining company, not to be trusted with anything. But I don't know that we can trust any of these multinational corporations. Look, if you really like, if we really want to go down the whole pit uh, political thing, if we want to go down that road, we are in this modern era where it really is corporations, corporations, mega, megalith corporations are basically running the show. That they basically are. It is the reality. You know, and at some point we're going to rise up, rise of the machines, you know, us the 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 middle class and the robots, we're going to rise together. It'll be some future movie. It's going to be awesome, but don't worry about it. The corporations are running the show right now. None of them can be trusted. Facebook, sure, they can't be trusted. Can you trust Google? Can you trust Microsoft? Can you trust Apple? None of these companies can be trusted. Let's get real about it. Okay, uh, VR Spry Guy says, I put tape on my cameras when I'm not using them. Just kidding. No, there's people that do that. And, you know, it's not necessarily the worst idea, especially like these cameras right here when they're not in use. Wasn't there a... Was there a um, Black Mirror episode? Wasn't there a Black Mirror episode where a kid was basically like doing the unmentionable, you know, on camera, got busted, and base? I, I forget how the story went, but did the kid like commit suicide or some shit? I forget what happened, but that is the thing that everybody fears is like you you get caught doing something you really shouldn't be doing on camera. And somehow that shit leaks onto the internet and oh my God, how freaking, like I have nightmares. Remember that one time I was doing a stream and I thought I had shut everything down and it didn't shut down and the camera was still rolling and I was streaming live and I was like walking around in my room and then I was like, oh shit, the camera's still on, it's still running. I mean, could you imagine what kind of horrible things could have possibly have happened during that time? So yeah, anyways. Rudel Zavendo says, I don't use Facebook. Kevin says, Anthony Kaczynski. Um, submit, pseudo soul is everywhere. I wonder when Anthony will release his manifesto. Conrad Lawrence says, I lived in the backwoods. It's overrated and I'm not going back. You can't force me. Uh, Slave Lay says, I'm a converted privacy advocate. I'm totally fine with being recorded 24 seven now. Just don't care. Yeah, so, I mean, what was that movie back in the 60s or whatever? Uh, something about, you know, I learned to love the bomb or whatever. You know, that that's basically what it's about, is you got to just give it up. Uh, Rudel Zavedno, though, says, no, privacy is important. I use VIP VPNs. I do all that stuff. Um, AI doesn't judge me. That is recycled. I printed out a little door for my computer webcam, but I don't keep my phones in a Faraday cage or anything. That is Onakaze. Okay, so anyway, yeah, that is the whole privacy thing. I'm not too worried about it, but from a VR standpoint, it is a little bit weird from the VR standpoint because we are, it's just going to get worse. You know, you think about all the cameras that are on these devices. We're, we are going to have full body tracking. And we're going to want full body tracking. We're going to want to be in VR. But guess what comes with full body tracking? Well, that information could go somewhere. So they could get all kinds of crazy. And, and then, like, think of the AR goggles of the future. Like, think of the Apple AR. Yeah, Dr. Strangelove. Think of the Apple AR goggles of the future where they could literally record everything that you're seeing all day long, 24-7. But again, there's just too many humans. You're not that important. There's just too many humans. It's strength in numbers. There's too many of us, man. There's too many of us for them to even care. Okay, in other news that I saw, did you guys see this where the, uh, they did kind of like uh, a ghetto style tear teardown of the Oculus Quest. And I mean, just looking at it, it's kind of amazing 
what they're able to do you know how how we make these electronics you know we put all these little things together you know they decide to put this little camera right here and they angle that camera just so and then they angle that camera a little bit different and they angle that camera over there and they got all the little pieces in there and they figured out where air is going to flow through the whole thing and they figured the whole thing out and it's just kind of amazing how we engineer this type of stuff and then it's mass produced and then it's out there it's it's pretty incredible like if you go down here i think i saw somebody in the comments they had something interesting to say about this uh, where was it yeah this guy says imagine you're in 2013 around the time the first vr unit came available the dk1 and alongside it was a prototype quest available for 10,000 loaded with only two games. It would probably go quick or get auctioned for millions or billions. Now we have what could only be imagined. Um, but no, it's kind of true. I mean, imagine if the Oculus Quest existed in 2013. People would be like, oh shit, this is some wizardry, man. This is some wizardry. We're doing some pretty incredible things. I mean, it really is pretty cool. They did a really good job with the Oculus Quest. I mean, I'm very, very impressed with what they've done overall here. And then they talked about the battery. And they did say that if you wanted to get crazy with it, you might be able to put a larger battery in there. They were talking about that a little bit. But you'd have to really be pretty freaking amazing skills modding skills and you i mean think of think of all the little screws that have to come out like it would be damn near impossible to put this shit back together i mean it would be almost impossible to put that thing back together i'm not going to open that thing up i'm not messing with that okay um let's see oh you know yeah so this disney animation we were just talking just a minute ago we were talking about vr experiences and i was saying look there are so many great vr experiences like zero days like dispatch like my uh so many good things like blade runner 2049 memory labs so many good vr experiences that you can check out and speaking of experiences so disney animation studios is going to debut their second VR short it is called a kite's tail and so this is going to this is going to debut at Sagraph uh, which is coming up in LA very soon on July 28th to August 1st at the Los Angeles Convention Center so they're going to show this off it combines classic hand-drawn animation and the latest innovations in virtual reality to tell this whimsical tale of two kites a playful puppy with a wagging tail and a pompous dragon who clash, tangle, and ultimately must learn to live with one another, subject to the winds of fate. So it's like uh, the short film is being directed by Bruce Wright. He's worked with Disney for more than 20 years. He's worked on uh, Big Hero 6, Zootopia, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Tangled, Frozen 2, etc., etc. Now here's the thing though. So they've had another film that was in this program, in their short circuit program for Disney Animation, and it was called Cycles, and it won awards. This thing called Cycles has won awards. It debuted in 2018. It's never been made publicly available. Like, what is up with that? It has never been made publicly available. Like, I, I've heard great things about this thing, Cycles, but there's only like... 500 people on planet earth that has even witnessed it like what are they doing with that why has it not come to oculus why hasn't it come to steam why hasn't it come to maybe playstation vr i'm not sure I'm, I'm guessing it's some kind of licensing thing they can't get enough money for it they don't want to give it away for free i'm not sure what's going on there but i'm kind of worried a kite's tail is going to be the same type of thing they need to figure out a way to get these things onto our actual headsets. Of course, it's easy for me to say that because they want some goddamn return. You know, they want a return on their investment. And we do have experiences that are actually going for legitimate money. In fact, we can bounce over here to the Oculus Rift store and I can see we might as well check in and see if there is a daily deal. Oh, we've got a really nice free weekend that is coming up as well. Brass Tactics, baby. Brass Tactics, in my opinion, one of 
probably one of the 30 best VR games that is available on any platform anywhere. Just such a damn good job. And if this runs good in Revive, I can imagine would look drop dead gorgeous in a Valve Index. It's the kind of game that would look drop dead gorgeous in a Valve Index because very recently I played Final Assault in my Valve Index and that shit was absolutely drop dead gorgeous and Brass Tactics would be drop dead gorgeous as well. And it's just such great production value. Just everything about the game is just so dialed in. Really like it. So they are going to have a free weekend that starts, I believe, Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, and I think it runs through Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Really good game. 30 bucks, kind of pricey, you know, definitely kind of pricey. I mean, not for the faint of heart. I mean, probably worth it, worth it, but still rather pricey. Now, if we want to look at the daily deals real quick, it is Guns and Stories, Bulletproof VR. That is going for 10 bucks. It's 50% off. You got a little over three hours left in that. You know what? I've played this not exactly terrible. This is not terrible. In fact, the developer is Mirowin, and that name might ring a bell because they do have a game coming this fourth quarter called Boiling Steel that actually looks damn good. It's kind of a poor man's lone echo almost in, a, in certain ways. Boiling Steel looks pretty goddamn good. And I would say that Guns and Stories Bulletproof, not terrible. It is not terrible. Is it worth $10? Eh, I don't know. I don't know. It's worth $5. It's absolutely worth $5. $10, that's a coin flip probably. But I was going to see, I was going to see, um, as far as experiences, do they break them down into experiences? Oculus Originals, Competitive Gaming, just because there, there are so many great experiences out there and some of them, some of them are um, asking for money. You know, they're they're like they're asking for. Okay, so here we go. Documentaries and histories, or history. Let's go ahead and check these out. So you got like spheres. Like spheres is going for ten bucks. It's asking for money. It's trying to get a little bit of money there. Zero days is going for five bucks. It's asking for money. I remember when zero days was going for ten dollars. I think it was free very briefly. And then it started asking for $10 for a while. Now it's down to 5 But you know what? This is worth it, man. This is worth it. Spheres is not bad at all either. But, you know, that's double up right there. Chernobyl Project, never mess with it. Not sure. Nefertiti, that was pretty cool. And Frank was cool. That's free. Berlin Blitz, Berlin Blitz that is free. So many good little things to try. I've tried a lot of these things. Some of them going for money. Lots of them are free. Um, and then they probably, some of them are probably in another category. Because Dispatch, like man, where's Dispatch? Dispatch was one of my favorites. Did you guys ever try Dispatch? So Dispatch has a number of chapters. It's episodic. Episodic. It's episodic. Episodic type of deal, right? It's free. But that's for like the first chapter. And then if you want to buy some additional chapters, they start charging money for it. Dispatch, I thought it was freaking fantastic. And then, of course, you do have the Blade Runner. What was it? Blade Runner Memory 2049. Blade Runner Memory Lab. Yeah, this one right here. Blade Runner Memory Lab. Uh, that was very good. That's for free. So a lot of great experiences. Some of them try to charge money. But it's a hard deal, man. It's a hard deal because a lot of people don't really want to pay money for experiences. We don't really have a Netflix setup in VR. Well, we have Viveport Infinity, which is absolutely the Netflix setup, but it's not really designed for experiences and stuff. It's more for games. And I think that's kind of the way that we're going to have to go. Now, eventually, when we have legitimate six DOF video, like real world, 
six doth video that is going to be such a game changer like none other i think vr is going to blow up like none other when we have legitimate six doth video maybe 10 15 years away i'm not sure but at that point they will be able to charge legitimate money for this stuff and make some good money okay let's see what some people are talking about in chat uh bill b says privacy isn't an issue try Try getting anyone to give a S about a public YouTube video. We're just not that interesting. Veer365 excluded. Now, you know what? I'm not even that. I mean, I might be interesting when I'm on a mic talking about VR because there might not be as many people doing this, but... But nah, no one's really all that interesting when you really get down to it. Onakaze says, I should really finish the single, single play on BT. Oh, Brass Tactics, yeah. Conrad Lawrence, for Brass Tactics, I'll reinstall the Oculus software. Um, let's see, Shurzad Khan City. It's getting there, though. They're talking a little bit about inside-out tracking. And, uh, you know, in terms of tracking whether you, you're using inside-out. Because, see, a lot of people have gone back. Now that they have Valve Indexes, they're using the Lighthouses. And so now that you have your lighthouses again, you're getting this like almost flawless tracking now. And so you're starting to compare that flawless tracking with some of the inside out tracking that has been going on. And so a lot of people are saying, you know what, I'm glad that I have the flawless tracking that only the lighthouses can bring to the table. Outside in. It's all about outside in. You got other people debating saying, no, you know what? Inside out is so damn close. It's going to keep getting better and better. Let's move forward and let's just go inside out from here. Like the next valve index, that's a great question actually. That's a great question of the day. Valve index 2.0. Is Valve going to stick with these base stations? I have a feeling they will. I think Valve is married to these base stations, man. The base stations are their baby. You know, they created these base stations. It was a very good idea. It's worked out very well for them. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be so hard for them to ever walk away from their base stations, which is unfortunate because they really need to do that. They need to walk away from them, but it's gonna be so incredibly difficult. You know, maybe with the Valve Index 2.0, maybe I will get my dream though of a base station that has a battery pack, a little swappable battery thing that just pops out of the back. You get two of them, you keep one of them charged, and basically every month you swap it out. And so you swap it once a month so there's no cables going anywhere. So you could have your lighthouse up on the wall, no cable anywhere. Once a month you pop the battery pack out. But that's about all they can do with those. I don't know what else they can do. Okay, um, Chernobyl is sick. So yeah, I haven't tried that one. I need to see like a, a video for it or like a trailer. Um, Main Van says, Inside Out is more portable and I can switch to different rooms, PCs in my house. Absolutely. I mean, the thing about the Oculus Quest, one of the most beautiful things about it, especially those of us that have families, we've got kids, we've got wives and stuff, it's tempting to go into our man caves and just stay in our man caves. But you know what? The nice thing about having an Oculus Quest you can take it, you can go to the living room, you can go to your kid's room, and you can get a little VR in while you happen to be close to your family. And, you know, you're kind of there. Even though you're not there, they feel like you are there. It's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. Um, let's see. Shurzad Khan City says, Valve is married to the trackpad also. Yeah, and they need to get a divorce with that trackpad. Let the trackpad go and let the freaking lighthouses go. It's time to go all inside out. Okay, main fan was talking about Rift S. Yeah, Rift S with, uh, if you got a pretty good laptop that can do it, if you got a laptop that is nicely compatible with, with the Rift S, it's very portable, very portable. Um, anyway, folks, we are basically now at about 8.30, so I guess we've been going for about an hour, which is beautiful, because I get to bounce the heck out of Dodge and I need to bounce the heck out of Dodge because you know what I got to do, guys? I got to play some Racket NX 
on my Oculus Quest. Yes, so Racket NX for the Oculus Quest, it comes out tomorrow. And this was a game I was really waiting for. I'm, I'm excited to finally be able to play it. I've been playing it. One little bit of advice I have is I'll just do this. I'll just do this, baby. Make sure to use these. Make sure to use these, okay? That's about the only thing I can say about it. I'll have to talk about it tomorrow. It is embargoed till tomorrow. I will definitely be talking about Racket NX. But remember, it's all about MRTV. It's all about Sebastian. So we're going to have Sebastian on Twitch tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. We would love to have 100 viewers. So help me out, folks. I'm going to tweet out that I'm going to have MRT. I'm going to do this tomorrow, though. I'll wait till tomorrow. I'm not going to do it tonight. I'll do it tomorrow. I'm going to tweet out that we're going to have MRTV on Twitch. Retweet that shit. Let people know we got to get 100 people into this Twitch stream just so MRTV feels like he has some kind of audience there because it's just not going to feel good if there's only 20 people there. That's going to suck. So we got to do it, folks. We got to get some more people on there. But anyways, I'm out of here. I'm going to play some Racket NX. I'll be talking about it tomorrow. We'll be talking a lot about Valve Index. We're going to talk a little bit about the reverb, like whatever happened to the reverb. Maybe Sebastian has an inside track on that. So we'll be talking to him about that. We'll be talking to him about the trade-offs with these VR headsets. We'll be talking about glare. We're going to talk about screen door. We're going to talk about FOV, all of the typical things that you would expect. So look for that tomorrow on the Twitch stream. But I'm bouncing out of here. I will see everybody tomorrow. Everybody have a good one. Download the Vertigo 2 demo. Check it out. It's absolutely worth checking out. And remember, Racket and X, baby, on the quest tomorrow. All right, I'll see you guys. Take it easy. Later.